Now we're going to discuss looking at the arteries. Even though this is a non-contrast study, we oftentimes can still appreciate some arterial pathology. It may not be the biggest focus of the study, and we may take what we see with a grain of salt, but it's important to kind of build this into your search pattern with varying levels of extensiveness, depending on kind of what's going on with the patient. So what we can do to take a look at the arteries is we can put, you know, we can use our axial um, orientation here with medium slice thickness, 2.5 millimeters. Uh, I, I put it on the ab abdomen window. And then I start with the coronal on the abdomen window on the other side. Um, and we'll just start kind of top down. But what you can do initially is just trace the aorta back. So here is left ventricle. Here's the aorta that's coming out. And what we can do is look at the aortic arch. And then we can go up and find the um, some of the origins of the great vessels. And, and what we can do is kind of come around here too. And here, this gives us a really good look where you have your brachiocephalic here, you have your common carotid here. And what you can do is just follow these vessels up as they come off. So here on the right side, we have the brachiocephalic, which came off the arch. And then here's our common carotid. We can follow this up. And again, here is the common carotid. And then here's the carotid on the other side, the common carotid. And we can follow the other common carotid. Again, here it is, a little hard to appreciate, back to the arch. So we can look at the origins and make sure there's not, you know, very obvious calcifications or stenoses that are going to be kind of a problem for our, for the anterior circulation to our brain. Uh, and then similarly, it's a little bit harder, but off of here is like kind of, um, you know, after the common carotid comes off, we, we actually have our subclavian artery, and then we have our vertebral, right vertebral that's coming off there. This is a little bit harder to appreciate. Um, and it's a little hard to appreciate on the coronals as well too, but basically we have, um, we can take a look at our vertebral arteries a little bit here too, pretty hard to appreciate. Um, and you can try to do it on the other side too. Here's the left vertebral. We just catch a little glimpse of it as it comes back to the subclavian here. So again, it, you, it, like I mentioned before, take it with a little bit of grain of salt, but you can look at some of the circulation. And especially when you look at the coronals, you can see a um, pretty good look at your, especially your brachiocephalic and your common carotids, maybe their vertebrals. But you can just quickly look at those and make sure they look okay. There's nothing um, flagrant going on there. And then what you can do is you can go back to the aortic origin here, and now we'll trace down the arch. And what we can do is put it on our uh, sagittal view here, and we can just get a real good look at the aorta. And we can, you know, if we need to, if it looks enlarged, we can measure and look for aortic aneurysms. Um, maybe, you know, you may even see things like intramural hematomas. Um, Without contrast, some of the aortic pathology is hard to interpret or, or really appreciate or see at all. But moral of the story is there may be some things that can tip you off where you may want to add contrast or look for something else. So again, we can start at the, the origin of the aorta. We see it really well here. We can follow, here's our aorta. We can follow it up as it goes through the arch. Now it becomes descending. And we can kind of switch our view here so we catch the descending aorta here. And we can just follow it down, make sure that it's not aneurysmal or anything crazy going on. And at this point, too, we can see some of the vessels that are coming off. So at this point, our, our celiac axis is coming off here. And let's see if we can find it on our, yeah. So um, we just barely catch it. And it's very hard to appreciate here, but it looks like it's probably right here. So that's difficult. And then if we go all the way down, we just catch the SMA. On other scans, you may go lower. You may be able to see some of these um, vessels off the abdominal aorta pretty well. But again, you know, on non-contrast imaging, your evaluation is limited, but you can see things like severe calcifications that in certain contexts may be very useful. 
once we've kind of scanned through the whole aorta, uh, what we can do is actually come back to the pulmonary artery, which we can do here. We can put this back on our, our coronal. And depending on how we can look at it, we can see our pulmonary artery here as well too. But, you know, it is possible to catch pulmonary embolisms on non-contrast. They have to be pretty obvious and kind of give you very clear difference in density without the contrast. Not going to be something very commonly caught on um, a non-contrast, especially if they're small. But it's still worth looking at the pulmonary artery, which we have right here. And uh, you can trace out the vessels as best as you can just kind of going back and forth to the different segments. So we go down the right side and we look at the different segments and just see if there's anything very, very obvious that we can catch. And then you can do the same thing on the left side, go down the left main pulmonary artery, going back and forth, tracing the vessels. Again, evaluation is limited of the arteries. However, uh, it's important to realize that it is not, um, it is possible to catch some arterial pathology, even on a non-contrast scan. So it's important to be comfortable with the anatomy on a non-contrast chest CT scan. Just be comfortable looking at the vessels and seeing if you see anything very, very obvious, uh, especially things like calcifications, which you can, of course, appreciate on a non-contrast study.